morning, everybody. It's Dee, and we're going to be getting started. Uh, today on the call, we have me and Mike Baker from DCEO. So uh, if you have any questions about any of the items that are on the screen right now, please uh, check those off so that we can answer those for you. Otherwise, I'm going to turn the floor over to Mike Baker. Okay. Thank you, Dee. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm feeling a little under the weather today, so bear with me if I sneeze during my comments. Um, the one thing that um, has hit our radar that we want to make sure everyone is on the same page on, and please spread the word to your colleagues that are not on the webinar, is that if you have someone that's gone into uh, employment, you can go ahead and enter that information into IWDS so that it's there and we can see that a person has entered employment. You do not have to exit them right away, um, especially if it's the case of temporary employment, um, because you know that's not the in-program goal, of course. Um, but there was uh, conversations with a couple of folks who let me know that they hadn't entered any employment data because the person hadn't exited yet. Like, well, it's okay. You don't have to exit them to go ahead and enter the employment data. So. If there's any questions on that, I'd be happy to try to field them. And uh, if not, I think it's relatively straightforward. So we just want to make sure that um, if somebody has entered an employment situation that's not subsidized, you know, that you enter you know, who they're working with, what they're earning, and what the occupation is, and, and that sort of information. And you can case note it if it is a temporary uh, situation. Because um, you know, temporary employment is better than no employment, and while it's not our end goal, you know, we do want to know the person is engaged in that and getting some work experience uh, and you know, what that work experience is related to. So, does anybody else have any issues or concerns at this point? Then we'll give everybody a minute just to type a little bit. Um, if we need to do any demonstrations, please let me know. I can uh, go on to the screen. OK, then um, I would like to move on to a, another topic while po folks are typing. Um, how are you all doing on addressing the backlog of clients or applicants that have you know, turned in an application but uh, still are waiting via eligibility? you feel like you're making good progress on those, or you feel a little overwhelmed? OK. Mike, we have a question from Connie about where do the case workers enter the job information in Adam? They do not enter it into Adam. They enter it into IWDS because Adam is the plan. IWDS is the actual. Right. So what you could do and should do is create an entry into the plan that speaks to that. But the, the official you know, information is going into IWDS for that. But you could note it in the plan as a, as a comment. Correct. Under, under the client's plan, you could enter it in there. But, but entering it that way, you, you, it doesn't go into any counts or anything. So it's just kind of information that's hanging there for somebody to look at and, and see what's going on. It's information for the team, right, Mike? Exactly. So Elwia 24 doesn't have anybody currently waiting. That's great. You want me to throw up a poll, make this a little bit easier for them? Sure. All right. I'm going to flip over to the Atom dashboard real quickly.
thought I had this up already, but if, if I did, it disappeared or I never did it. I've got I've got the dashboard open if you want me to share my screen. Okay. Um, just looking at the southwest region here real quick to see what it says. Okay, the southwest dashboard indicates that there are twenty five that have not taken TABE and two that have passed the TABE and still awaiting WIA eligibility. But I'd have to do an export to see which LWIA those are for sure. So I'll double right. check on that. Mike, do you want to address Larry's comment here at Central Processing Adam applications telling applicants what time frame is for next training and when more eligibility will take place? Was that just a comment, Larry, or, or yeah. is that it's a statement of where you guys stand, right? And I'll just comment, you know, Larry, if you've got, depending on how far out that next training is, um, you could be doing career exploration with folks. Um, before they go into uh, a training plan, but um, that's kind of balance, and I'm sure you guys are doing this, but kind of balance, you want them waiting on the front side before they come in the program or waiting a little bit on the, on the back side. And, you know, once they're in, you know, we are hopeful that they don't have any downtime uh, or very minimal downtime, and hopefully they're doing something value added for their plan. Okay, uh, Karen, that's an interesting comment. What is the rationale for waiting until August to do additional recruitment? Hey, Dee, would you mind sharing the statewide intake dashboard with folks? Sure. Let me move this poll out of the way. All right, can you see it? Uh, not yet. There it is. Okay, can we blow that up? bit. How's that? Uh, not, yeah, not seen it yet. A little more. You can make your view full screen if you need to. I'm at 150% on my browser. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's good enough to see what I I want to show. Can you scroll down just a little bit? A little bit more. A little one or two clicks more. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's perfect. So what I'm looking at from Springfield, oh, we got to go back up a little bit.
I, I want to show the WIA eligibility part and the Adam eligibility determination. All right, so and, all of this. Yeah. So up just a little more, please. Okay, up just a little more. I think there's a little bit of a time lag. I've got the WIA eligibility at the top of my screen. Yeah, I want to see the thing above that. Oh, sorry. Failed one test or more? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, one more above. My bad. The there we go. Okay. So, so according to what I'm seeing in Springfield, this is statewide, there are 207 people that have completed an application that have not taken a tape test yet. And then if you look down the intake process, there are 33 folks statewide that have passed uh, that, the tape testing but still have the rest of their WIA eligibility to complete. And then if you look down to the next step, there are 26 people statewide that have passed WIA eligibility, but now they're doing the rest of the ADAM eligibility. So for the folks that are saying you're all caught up or have pen in place, please check your region's numbers and make sure that you don't have any people embedded in here that you think are handled. Um, if someone has fallen off the face of the earth after starting the process, you know, they can be withdrawn. But you know, I'm still showing you know, a large number of folks statewide that it took the time to fill out and send in an application, but still haven't made it through either they're not eligible or into the random assignment process. So Don is asking, uh, please clarify when the red goes away on the intake screen. Do you mean like the red? Like the failed reading only? The, the red warning, way? or are you looking at the dashboard? If you're talking about when you have an individual's name and a red marker next to them, that's a, a red flag that they have submitted an application but have been picked by a case manager for more than 10 days. That has not been picked. Right. Okay. Haven't been picked. So um, that goes away when they're picked or if they've drifted away and, 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 and have We've lost contact with them. They are withdrawn from their application is withdrawn. So either they, they have to be withdrawn or a case manager has to pick them. And then that red mark goes away. If that's what she means. Yeah. Red warning was when you picked them, but some of these have been picked are still red. Interesting. So then Sarah says, my experience is that the red goes away after one attempt to certify the IWDS application. So maybe try that, that Donna, and, and we'll see. And what I'll do is I'll note all of these things um, and we'll grab some expertise from the system uh, to get an answer directly to you by email. Yeah. If you can, uh, Donna, can you give us a specific individual that we could check? Or uh, how about if we have that sent to info at IllinoisWorkNet.com? I'll type that in the chat box. That's fine. Because we are recording this. I would prefer not to have that information out on a recording. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, 
How do we get a customer to not show us off track when they have already been exited? Oh, great question. You need to go in and modify the plan. Yes. So we go to, I'm going to go into the test area here. So under Alan Alda plan, Sorry, it's loading because we're in the test instead of live. And then you would go in and um, change what their plan is, all of the pieces down here in the plan. And then I would also put in there just a note that says um, exited so that, you, so that you're not having them show up again anymore. Are you good, Cindy, with that? What do we change in the plan? Their end date? Um, that would probably be all of this information here. You would take out any of the dates so that if you're looking at optional training, um, optional training, you would take out any of the dates that are set here for them. So if the screen has caught up with me, we've got traditional bridge, contextualized learning. We would take that date out, what the end date is. And then and over here in the comments section, I would just put um, person has exited. We've got a couple of people typing, so let's take just a moment and see what they are saying. Karen says, recruiting, assessing, and selecting is a time-consuming process and must be strategically planned out. With Adam, it is even more time-consuming. We also have regular WIA dollars to spend, and that is our current focus. Decatur has stated all along that we would begin recruitment again in August for October training start date. We wanted to make sure that current customers were doing well in training and successful with employment without flooding the market locally. Mike, uh, Mike Pierman saying remove both start and end date for exits or just an end date. I, I, I would just take it all out. Well, Do it depends. That, Mike? Um, it depends on what happens. If they started the training, if, like if, they, if you have an element in the training plan and they started that, but then finished early, dropped out, whatever, then you would change the end date to whenever they um, left that particular element. And if they completed it successfully, you mark it as a successful completion. If they did not complete it successfully, you mark it as a did not successfully complete or unsuccessful completion. But if they never started it and they and they have changed direction, either got a job or left the program. If they didn't start the element, just take it out entirely. Yes. All right, Larry, I pulled up the this the uh, screen that you wanted or did you want the one at the very top? Top okay. So the dead, okay, up here. And this is this is these jobs. This is where you add the employers. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if you're if this is where you want me to be. Yeah, like this is where you would enter the other screen. Okay. So on a customer their plan and the this WBL job placement and you're saying how do you fill out the job employment fields and I'm wondering if you're meaning this employment type All right, then whatever the type of job that it 
is that they are going to be doing on their plan is what you pick. So if they're going to be doing job shadowing or if they're going to be doing permanent employment, this is, this is what they would be doing. That's what you would put here or work experience or any of the other options that are available. Does that answer your question? And again, this is their plan. And then you would enter the actual in IWDS. What was raised two weeks ago? I don't remember I don't remember talking about this two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, your case gotcha. manager. All right. All right. So actual employment goes into IWDS and then if somebody has been uh, because you can enter the jobs from the employers in here. So if they're interested in participating in a particular job, you bookmark that for them through this job search component of it. And then what they want to do, are they looking to find something to do a job shadow? Are they looking to do something for permanent employment or one of the other options that are available? And now, does that answer your question? And Mike is typing right now. Sorry. I can hear his keyboard. Yep, sorry, all. So I just want to jump back to Karen's response, um, because I understand the logic behind it. But I have a concern that folks that have submitted an application haven't heard back from anyone to let them know what their status is. Um, so I'm worried that we're, since we do have quite a few people that we still need to get enrolled in the program to meet our overall goal, that people that have taken the time to fill out an application and submit it are thinking that we uh, don't care. So I'm, OK, so OK, let's see. OK, great, thank you. Um, and Karen, roughly how many people are we talking? Because ND, um, I emailed you a table. Are you able to share that? Oh, I have to get it. I will, let me see if I can pull this up. Well, and then also, Karen, um, something to think about. There, can you see what you wanted to see? I can't make this any bigger. Yeah, OK. I guess we'll have to make a blue screen. I guess. What this is trying to show everyone, and I'll just I'll have to go back to mine to actually see it, that in the northern state line region there are 45 people awaiting WIA eligibility. Collar County has 56, North Central has 55, Central has 48, and Southwest has 26. So these numbers were as of the um, 17th, so they're a week old, so I'm sure these have changed uh, a little bit since then. But the point is, every region is showing up as having somebody that's awaiting WIA eligibility. So then, um, then back to Karen. Um, 
there are things that people could be doing in the meantime. Um, see, this is the end of June, so you've got like you know a couple months here for folks to come in. They could be doing that online MSSC module first and earning a credential and have that out of the way, or they could be uh, doing the career exploration and, and taking their time about it and learning more about it uh, while they're in as well. So something to keep in mind, um, but I know that requires a little bit of hand-holding of uh, clients and there are staff capacity issues, but we just want to make sure that we don't lose those folks because uh, um, every, every single head count is precious at this point. That's my only concern. Okay, right, any other so issues? Mike wants to know if we can get a demo on adding certificates to WorkNet. So it's under the person's plan and again this is planned certificate achievement, not actual um, certificates, actual certificates go into IWDF. And what you would do then is under optional training, and I may be in the wrong place, it might be under technical training. Since I'm not in here every day. Okay, here we go. Um, we've got MSSC certification so it's under technical training, I apologize. Uh, under here, you would pick the start date for the, uh, the training area, what the projected end date is, and then the course or credential you can pick from a list here, and then the type, whether it's the course or the certification or credential, when the plan training date is, and then update. That will add that to, so if I put in today, I'm putting in a projected end date of, of uh, July 1, and then I'm picking that they're going to be doing a manual drill press course uh, plan 